This video is brought to you by Dev Mountain, a coding bootcamp that offers in-person and online courses in a variety of subjects, including web development, iOS development, user experience design, software quality assurance, and Salesforce development. For more information, consult the link in the description below. An email alert component that once this script is finished executing successfully, it will just send us an email and let us know that it's done so. So a lot of this is going to be lifted from another video I have in my channel, which is about how to send an email with Python. And that video is going to be a little bit beyond the scope of this video, namely because it kind of shows you how to set up an email account, shows you how to uh, set a setting in that account to make it less secure to allow you to actually use Python to set that up. So in order for you to make use of this part of the tutorial, I'll link to that video so you can actually set that up first. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be taking code from that video and then creating another file in this project and then essentially pointing you to that video so that way you can actually get it set up to work properly. So I would point you to that video to understand what is happening with the code. I will briefly walk through it, but I will say that video probably does a better job at walking through that code than I'm going to do here or a more thorough job, let's say. So I'm going to create a new file, which I'll call email underscore alert dot pi. So I'm just going to take the code from this video that I will link in the description below. I'm going to paste that in there. And just very briefly, what I have here is I'm importing two things, config and SMTP lib. So config is a file that we've also yet to create. This is going to have all of our credentials for the email account that we're sending from. So it's going to essentially allow us to log into whatever email we're sending from. And then uh, it's going to have like the email and the password. And then that's going to allow us to actually log in and send an email from that account. This SMTP lib is the Python library that's going to allow us to actually send the email. So what I've done here is there's a class called email alert with uppercase E and uppercase A. And what I have here is I've initially I've allowed you to initialize an object of this class with a subject and a message. So the email subject and the email message. And then the main function of this class is this one called send email. And this is the meat and potatoes of what is covered in that video that I will link to in the description below. Essentially what's happening is we use Gmail as the server. We log in using the email address and the password from the config file that we will write. And then what we do is we say, what's the message? Well, in this case, the message is what we pass in as the class variable, the private variable for the message. We go ahead and send the mail from the from address to the to address and then to uh, the message as well. And then we quit and then we print out a output to say if the message was sent successfully or if it failed to send. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this and I'm going to also create a new file, which is called config.py. And notice that here, just before I do that, notice that here the from email address, the password, and the to email address are all being read from this config file. So I'm going to create those three variables so that way we can actually have them in a separate file. This just makes it a little bit more modular and a little bit um, you know, easier if you wanted to store this configuration file somewhere else. If you're storing, let's say, sensitive information, you don't want maybe to have all of this in one place. You want to store this configuration file in a secured encrypted location. So I'm just going to say tab new config.py and I'm going to just create three variables which you will fill in with your respective email address, so the from and the to, and then also the password that allows you to log into the email address that you've set up following the other video. So we're going to say password, or let's just say from email address is equal to an empty string, to email address is equal to an empty string, and also password is equal to an empty string. So again, right now they're empty. You would fill these out, you would put in your own credentials, and that would allow you to send the email to whatever account you want. So I'm going to go ahead and write that and off screen what I'll do is I'll fill in my own credentials so that way we can actually see that it does what we expect it to do with respect to email. Going back to email alert, just make sure that you save that. And then going back to product price, what we're going to do up here is we're going to import the email alert class into this file. So we're going to say from email alert, which is the name of the Python file, we're going to import the class email alert. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back down to the main portion of the program at the bottom. Once we've updated the product price spreadsheet, we're going to call this email alert class. We're going to instantiate an object of this class and send the email. So let's just go ahead and say email is equal to email alert. And this takes two things, a subject and a message. 
So the subject can be something like Google Sheets updated. And then the message can be something like, this is a message to let you know that the spreadsheet has been updated. Something simple like that. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and actually send the email. So we'll say email that send email. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in those credentials and then we'll go ahead and run this and I'm going to check to make sure this actually did what we expected. Now what I'm going to do is uh, just to make this a little bit shorter, I'm going to go back to our spreadsheet here and I'm going to go ahead and remove um, the price information. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete all of this stuff here. And I'm not going to process all of these items just because we've kind of seen this in practice. We've seen it go through a list of larger items. So in this case, I'm just going to remove those two items and we'll just see it operate on one thing here. So saving that, going back to our code, let's go ahead and rate this, make sure it's written. And then let's say Python product price. So with any luck, we should see the browser open up again. So it seems like the browser is going to open up. We're going to navigate to the web page. This case, we're just going to be searching for one item as opposed to a list of three that we had before. It's going to search for the item like we saw. It's going to pick the first one and then it's going to extract that information. So I'm just going to, to move the browser over to the right here so we can actually see that it's printing out the proper messages. So it looks like it did acquire all that information. It says updating spreadsheet and then it says success, email sent. So let's just verify that is the case. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the browser, uh, the other browser. So let's close that one, this one here. And I have an email account that's associated with this um, project that I've set up that I follow the instructions to with the uh, email video that I have listed in the description. So let's just go over to the account here. Let's just make sure that we actually got an email. So it looks like we did. So this was sent just a little while ago. We checked the send date. So it was sent zero minutes ago. And we see that the message Google Sheets updated or the subject rather. And then also this message to let you know that the spreadsheet has been updated. So it looks like that was sent successfully. And that's pretty much all we wanted to do in this video. So in the next one, I'm just going to kind of wrap up and give an overview, uh, maybe suggest some ideas of what you can do with the uh, essentially what you have here. So thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video.